But yeah, so Polymer Summit happened. It was really yes. good. I recommend everyone to uh, watch all the videos. Mm. There's good talks. There's even a supercharged. There is I, a supercharged. I, I do say so myself. Yes. You were involved. I, Monica I was involved. In, yes. Even I was involved. You were. <laughs> <laughs> they let you on stage again. Yes. Uh, what was very good. Um, I, one of the talks I really liked at Polymer Summit was Justin's. Yes. And he was talking about uh, lit HTML, like with a sort of. Yes, and that really spoke to me because he wrote an alter like he wrote basically a VDOM alternative or a different take on mm. VDOM. And I've been playing around with VDOM a, a lot basically because of tasklets that we talked about in the last podcast, mm -hmm. which hopefully everybody has listened to. Um, <laughs> <laughs> do you want to do you want to do like an American TV show previously? <laughs> previously on oh, HTTP two or three? Oh, announcer though, <laughs> because my voice. <laughs> so it's just like some exclude. <laughs> that was really good, actually. <laughs> I like that. So yeah, I've been looking into VDOM, and it took. I, I heard about VDOM a lot, and I knew basically what it did. That you had like. Uh, an alternative in-memory representation of the DOM. And if you change something, it would just create a completely new version and then find out the differences. Mm. But I never realized that is a solution to the data binding problem. Mm. If you look at Polymer, usually like annotate, this attribute should always have the value of this value uh, variable that I have in my state. Right. right. And whenever it changes, there's some magic going on that realizes, oh, this has changed. I should therefore also update this attribute in the DOM. Yeah, and I worry and a little bit, especially when it's two-way data binding. I, and, oh, and, it's a lot and, of magic and involved. You look at the implementation, and I just never understood it. Mm. There's like mutation observers, but also you create magic getters and setters. So you can hook into the mutation of the variable. And if either of the sites change, you have to do all the piping. And mm. it is not easy to implement a proper two-way binding thing. And then VDOM comes along and basically just says, don't worry about the two-way binding. We're just going to like re-render the entire tree as an object and figure out what changed for you. Right. And in terms of algorithm, that is simpler. If you want to do like a really good diffing algorithm, that's not easy. But in terms of how it works, it's easier to understand. And I never realized, OK, so VDOM is a solution to the two-way data binding thing. Right. It becomes very one way. And yeah. And then the, on the other side, you would use events to bubble up changes back into your state. And that yep. kind of makes sense. But I always, then, after I understood that, I thought about it more and more. And I was like, this is, once again, developer experience over user experience. Right, because it is a great developer experience. Because like, that, that sort of way you're redeclaring the world every time, it, it, it sorts out a lot of state bugs. You put like in you a fairly small library. If you look at Preact, that's three kilobytes. That's right. tiny. Mm -hmm. And it does all these things, plus components and other stuff even. Um, but also, it completely neglects the fact that if you have a decently sized document with a couple, let's say, a couple thousand DOM nodes, right. there's a lot of diffing going on that is completely unnecessary because you, as a developer, know that the big portion of your document is static and doesn't change. Right, and you, you pay that cost per node, not per change. Yeah, so VDOM, I guess the VDOM update or render call scales with how big your document is. Yeah, to some degree. And there's, there's also like should component update, which is your sort yeah. of get out of like, yeah. jail. like if, if, if there's a large part, if there's a large part of the tree that doesn't change, then you, you can in, in the sort of React world sort of avoid redoing the work there. So, so we've got this, this virtual DOM uh, idea that React uses, which where you're paying the cost roughly per node that exists. Yeah. Um, whereas lit HTML and uh, hyper HTML, which which is a, a does a very similar thing, and I, I've been looking at hyper. I think HTML. Justin they, even they called out hyper HTML as one of the inspirations for lit HTML. Oh, cool! Oh, excellent! So they use uh, tagged templates, JavaScript, string <laughs> literals. Dot <laughs> <laughs> com. Is that right? I, I, <laughs> with some of those words, maybe not in that order, is the thing, right? I, I think you're right, but I think I want to also have it as a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the. The benefit of using, so you, you, you've got your HTML in the sort of string part of the template. Which is a very common pattern to have. If you have a yeah. custom element, you want to have your shadow root markup, for example, or just some styles or something in there as like an HTML string most mm. of the time, which is what JSX does in one way or the other. And this one is basically without the JSX pre compilation bit, right. and instead using the HTML tagged. 
template, template string, string literal. literal. <laughs> So and one of the benefits of that is that it knows that the the string parts of the uh, template do not change. No, because what you use is or the, the thing about tagged template string literals <laughs> is that so these are the things, in case people don't know, the backticks, the new backtick strings in mm. JavaScript yeah. are template string literals. Yes. And you can tag them by putting a function name before that. And that means that the JavaScript parser will bisect, dissect, the string into mm. the string bits and the bits where you use the dollar bits. curly braces things to put values in there. Right. And then exactly. you don't have to like put the values directly. We can do some some processing on that first. Yeah. And what Justin does is that he generates a template tag, the actual HTML template tag, mm. and replaces your interpolation variables with something with a placeholder. Right. So he basically remembers in the template tag where values can mutate. And that means whenever you change a value, he doesn't have to div the entire tree, but already knows where to jump and where to compare. Yes. And that makes a big difference. Yes. And, and HyperHTML uh, uh, by Andrea Giamacci is, is, is implemented very similar. Like it's uh, Even if you've got that interpolation bit in the middle of a, you know, a string, yeah. in the middle of a, a text node, um, I, I think what Andrea does is actually uh, at compilation time, inserts a comment in there uh, <laughs> that you can then go and pick out and then replace that node with whatever yeah. you actually wanted in there. I think Justin just does it with some text and goes and finds that text. I think he just creates a text. separate text node, but I'm not 100% there. But most of the time, you just have two operations. Either you set an attribute mm. or you replace a DOM node in the template. Yep. And that's the two operations. You can ex extend it. You have an extension API, a parts API, he calls it, where you can decide to actually this is supposed to be a property or an event listener. Um, right, yes. But at its basic level, there's only two parts, which is attribute mo modification and node replacement. I, I played a little bit with HyperHTML. You've played with lit. I, I think it's It's an interesting, interesting pattern. Interesting. I'm one, I, I feel like it could be the next move of what what is the thing on mm. the web where it's 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 a very nice middle ground because I always did the manual. I just write a custom element. I know what things I need to change, and we'll just mutate them manually with query selector and just setting the things. Yep. And this is the getting most of the developer experience without paying as big of a performance cost as with a pure VDOM diffing yep. approach. Absolutely, and that is really really nice. Mm. The Almighty Jank. The Almighty Jank. <laughs> That's a good wrestler name. I like that. <laughs> the Almighty Jank like walks into the ring and then just freezes, <laughs> while the other guy just sort of walks around. Takes like, a chair from the uh, side. Just goes, hits him, and he, and he just falls over. It doesn't 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 turn into a cardboard cutout. Yeah. <laughs>